watching Notes and Nine. Hello, and welcome to Notes and Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 178, X Pages Bootstrap Date Picker, Part 1. You can pick a date, but you can't pick your nose. Why is that? Okay, uh, just a quick public service announcement, a reminder um, that I'm going to be uh, changing uh, the way the Notes 9 videos are hosted, uh, and I'm planning on going to YouTube only, and that will break any current RSS feeds and iTunes. Uh, I think the blog RSS feed will survive. I really don't know what's going to happen to the video inside it. I've not tested it. Um, there are ways to download videos from YouTube for offline use, um, so you might want to check into that. And uh, again, if you know of a way to create an RSS feed from the YouTube video source um, let me know um, but the the main reason behind this is just some cost savings that I'm trying to do and, uh, and there you have it so notes of nine is not I mean is going to continue um, but uh, I'm just trying to do it cheaper uh, quite honestly so that's that Okay, uh, John Jardin, IBM champion extraordinaire, comes back on. Uh, John is a great developer from the South Africa region, I believe. His Twitter is at John uh, underscore Yukavuma. His email address is here. It has that weird ZA thing underneath it, but I guess that's important uh, to get a hold of him. And uh, he, uh, is a, he is an expert at training and mentoring, and he does so much with, with mobile development, with Accelerator, and even at, you know, for non-XPages stuff. Uh, certainly in the mobile XPages space with bootstrap integration and, and using even a, I think accelerator to talk to XPages applications and then even non XPages applications so if you have a programming need or need help uh, you would probably do well in contacting John and he can certainly uh, get you squared away on in short order um, okay so today he's gonna come on and, and this is the first of a two-part series where he's gonna talk about integrating a bootstrap date picker into your XPages application now he is using um, a CDN for his bootstrap which is very quick and easy to get started you don't need to put any resources um, you know into into your NSF file at all uh, but if you do do that you're at the mercy of the CDN um, so I, I personally prefer to use the extension library um, so if people can get to my app they can get to bootstrap uh, I've seen some you know weird customers of, of ours you know they block different CDNs for whatever reason or so and that can get a little dicey so just be aware of that certainly see the CDN is a great way to get started and playing um, but if you want complete control uh, then you are going to want to try to get the bootstrap resources into your your NSF or under your server via the extension library ideally um, uh, so again that just gives you complete control um, so with all that uh, jabber being said let's go to the demo hi everyone and welcome to this video I'm John Jodin from Ukavuma and today I'm going to show you how to include a bootstrap date picker in your XPages application this is a two-part video tutorial where I'll first be focusing on how to get the date picker up and running within your XPages app. Alright, so if we go to a demo that I have running over here, you'll see I've got a simple XPage running and we've got three date pickers on, on the page itself. The first one is the standard XPages date picker that comes um, with, with Domino and if you click on there you can see you've got the picker control up and running. The second one is the Dojo Date Picker, which is now also available uh, that ships with Domino. And this provides similar functionality. It allows you to go and select dates from a picker and gives you all kinds of uh, crazy options. The third one is the Bootstrap Date Picker. And you'll see immediately that um, it doesn't have any kind of uh, list box selection. Once you click on the field, it loads the Date Picker control and it, it gives a similar sort of feature set as what you what you have with the other two date pickers. Now the reason why I favor the bootstrap date picker is because a lot of the XPages development that I do lately is focused around responsive web design and I do favor Twitter bootstrap. So when it comes to a bootstrap environment I start frowning when it comes to controls that look like this and I'd rather I'd rather have um, controls blend through and through that that seem to conform to the this the, the overall theme so that's one of the many reasons why i enjoy the date picker okay so before we get into the design on how to get this up and running uh, i first want to take you to the bootstrap date picker site so if we go to google and just say uh, type in bootstrap uh, date picker 
you'll see uh, a couple of options. The third one says date picker for bootstrap and this is the one that we're using. So if I open that in a new window, I get given a very cool um, dashboard that allows me to download the relevant files that I want and to also um, set up the date picker to, to, to how we would like it inside my XPages application. So uh, the default is the one that we're going to be using here. What's nice is on the right hand side it shows you the HTML tag that you would use as well as the JavaScript that needs to run in order to convert this HTML tag or this input control into a date picker. Uh, if we on the left hand side uh, is a live working example of how this would go and if I click on there you can see I've got the, the date picker running everything looks great. Now what this dashboard allows you to do is provide some parameters uh, that, are, that, that just give you extended features uh, when it comes to a date picker. So for example we prefer our formats to be year, 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 month, month, day, day. Um, you can even provide a start and end date, uh, which, excuse me, only allows the um, the user to select within that date range. You can then also disable or enable the today button. So if we go and say enabled unlinked, we can go over there, and now we've got the today button at the bottom. And if I select a value, you can see that um, it's got the the format, the year, month, day format that I asked for. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, the clear button. Uh, orientation is fine. Uh, so over here, auto close, you'll notice that when I selected a date, it didn't close. So if I say auto close and I try that again, now it closes the date picker. I want to highlight the current day. So now when I click over here, it shows what the current day is. Everything is good over there. And I don't think I'm going to be using anything else for this example. So I'm very happy with the parameters that I've provided uh, here. So we're going to take this and we're going to go and we're going to include this into our XPages design. So first things first, we need to down, download uh, version 1.4.0. That's the current latest version uh, according to this dashboard site. And once you've downloaded, once you've downloaded the, these files, what we'll do is include them into our design. Now I've got a little sample database running over here. And if I select this and go to the Project Explorer, I can go to the XPages R&D application, go to the web content folder and you'll see that I've already added the resources inside there. So whatever you download from the site, just extract it and it will give you a folder. I just renamed the folder to date picker and within it you'll see it's got the necessary CS, JS and, um, and, and other locale files that you, that could come in handy later on. So we put that inside the web content folder of our project. So going back to the design, we have an X page over here called um, Date Picker. And if I preview this in the browser and I just call it Date Picker, you'll see that it's only got the two controls versus the three that I demoed earlier on. All right, so we're going to be including the third one. So going back to the code, let's, uh, this date picker X page is connected to a custom control that I already created, which is CC date picker. And all that's doing is housing a, a, a simple table with the two standard controls that, uh, that were shown now on, on, on the actual web page. So what we're going to do is go into this third row. I'm just going to go and say bootstrap date picker. And over here, I'm going to drag a edit box. Okay, so that's good for now. So now we've got a placeholder for the date picker that we want to use. Now, once we've once we've dragged the, the box over here, there are a few things that we need in order to get this up and running. So the first one is because it's a bootstrap date picker, we need Twitter bootstrap running within our, within our XPages application. And I just so happen to have that in one of the custom controls. You'll see that I have here uh, bootstrap resources and if I go into this custom control and view the source you'll see that I'm connecting to jQuery uh, retrieving the latest jQuery files, uh, the latest bootstrap min file and the bootstrap CSS. So this is all I'm getting from, um, from the CDNs that are related to Twitter bootstrap. All right, So that's, that's all I need. Now that we've added our files in the project explorer what we also need to do is include uh, or reference the 
Uh, I think it's the Bootstrap Date Picker MinJS and the uh, Date Picker 3.css. So even though we've got all these files over here, we're actually only referencing two of them. And if we go into another custom control that I created to save time, you'll see there's a custom control called Date Picker Resources. If I double click inside there and go to the source, you'll notice I'm referencing that folder in the Web Content folder and I'm referencing the, the Bootstrap Date date picker min and the date picker 3.min.css. So those are the only two files that I need. Now coming back to my date picker custom control, I want to add these resources uh, to the top. So all I'm going to do is above my table, I'm going to go and include first the bootstrap resources. So very important, you put that first and then we can put the date picker resources inside there as well. All right, so now we've got we've got all all the referencing that we need uh, to to get everything running. Now it's a matter of just applying the script that uh, we saw here at the bottom, so that it can run against the um, the, the 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 text field that's going to be housing the the date picker. All right. So what I have over here already predefined is the date picker code that I'm going to run and you'll, I'm going to just copy this and I'll explain it very shortly. So if we go back into our design, what we will need to do is run a script block at the bottom of our design. So if we just go to the bottom, uh, let's just put it underneath the table for now and we can say in the custom controls we want to load a output script. There we go. And inside the value or what is it? Inside the value, it allows us to run some client-side JavaScript. I'm just going to paste that code that I copied from Sublime Text. So this is a standard uh, jQuery function that makes sure that all the resources are loaded before it performs the, the script within. And uh, because we are referencing the bootstrap files and the jQuery files, we might as well just use the jQuery ready function. Obviously, you can also use the dojo.ready uh, because Dojo is enabled in this example and could be enabled in your environment. So we've also got a jQuery function over here that references anything that has the date picker style or the date picker class within the tag, within the HTML tag. And then from that, it does a chaining function that runs the date picker and provides these parameters. Now, we included our text field over here but we didn't apply any kind of styling or class to it. So what we can do here is just say style class is equal to, oh, what am I doing? Style class is equal to date picker. What am I doing here? Right. I think I'm back on track now. And before I do that, I think it's worth maybe just showing you what's going to happen if we don't apply that class. So if I go here, You'll see I've got that, I've got this, it just looks like a normal input text field, there's nothing going on because there's no uh, jQuery that's run against it. So it's very important that we do provide a, a style class over here of date picker. And now if we go back to our script block, which I could have sworn I had code in it now. Apparently I didn't copy it or paste it properly, so let's go here. Let's go back here, and that didn't work. Of course it didn't. Let's try that one more time. And just paste the code again. There we go. All right, so again, we reference the class called date picker, and then we apply the date picker um, uh, formatting with the properties that you see over here that we generated from online. So if I click on OK, I save this, and I go and preview this again in the browser, it's now, it's already changed, it's made the field bigger, and if I click on say, I'm getting all the functionality that I was looking for. So there we go, my date format is correct, it highlights today, there is the today button, and yeah, it's giving me everything else that I need. But to finalize this, uh, why don't we just take it to that last step, because it is a bootstrap date picker, it's only fair that we style this field to look like a bootstrap field. So what I've done over here is because we've got bootstrap running, I've just grabbed some div tags that will allow us to make this field look a little bit neater. And if I go inside my design, if I go into this uh, table data column, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste 
the the the, the code and I'm going to put the text field within those two divs. Why does this never work when you want it to work? All right, so I can't auto format or auto indent. So you'll see over here, the first div I have is a class row and form horizontal. That applies the necessary styling to the field to make sure that it looks nice and neat and it conforms to uh, bootstrap standards in terms of responsive design. The second one, uh, I'm just uh, assigning a class of column small seven, which means um, only make the width of the field uh, seven columns of the 12 columns that, that Bootstrap works with, okay? So by putting this text field within these two divs, uh, we can go back and preview this, and, ah, that didn't work, bummer. I must have missed something. So let's go quickly see what I missed. Go back inside here, yeah, this seems right, this seems right, style class, ah, sorry about that. Obviously, to, uh, to comply to the standards, we also need to go and say form control. We need to apply that as a style to our input field. If I go and save that now and go and preview this, aha, much better. Okay, so now we've at least got a good looking field and click on it, we've got our control up and running and there you go, bootstrap date picker for X pages. So I hope this was helpful to everyone. I hope uh, this makes sense and creates some excitement across the board. Um, for the second part of the tutorial, I'm going to be uh, demonstrating a very important feature uh, that will further justify why I do use uh, this date picker within my XPages application. So until then, enjoy. And that's the demo. I thank John for coming on. This is his second of three shows uh, on Bootstrap, and part two will, will be up next. If you have any questions uh, for me, here's my contact information, and I thank you for your time.